What's up guys? It's the Casual Cutter back again. And today I have a tutorial video for you. Um, earlier in the week I had asked over on my Instagram account if anyone would like to see a tutorial on how to smooth out the action in your CRKT Pilar. So a bunch of you responded and now I'm making the video. So here today I have a brand new in the box Pilar Large. Um, for all intents and purposes, there is no difference in what I'm going to be doing today to this um, between the large PLR and the standard PLR. So, if you want to uh, learn how to smooth out the action in your PLR, stick around and uh, watch this video. Okay, so first we're going to go over what you need to get this job done. Um, it's pretty simple. You need a knife, first of all. You are going to need a polishing compound. I recommend Flitz. Um, Flitz is a polish for metal, plastic, fiberglass. Um, and it's, it is an abrasive, um, so you're going to have to be careful when you use it not to uh, apply too much uh, elbow grease um, because as an abrasive, it does remove material. Um, but we'll go over the steps and how to use it properly. Uh, you can pick up Flitz either online, um, various websites have it, Amazon has it, um, or you can go to your local hardware store and they should have it too. But I recommend the um, silver tube here. Um, this is a, let's see, 50 gram, 1.76 ounces, and it should last you a really long time. And you can use it for other stuff, polishing um, various metals and, and what have you. But um, I think I paid about... I don't know, seven or eight bucks for this tube, and uh, it should last a really long time. You're also going to need, for tools, a T8 driver um, for the pivot and a T6 for the body screws. Um, I happen to use an auxiliary driver, um, so I don't have to switch back and forth, but you know, if you only have one driver, you can just swap the heads back and forth but you're gonna need that T8 and T6 Torx bits. Um, you're also gonna need a microfiber towel, some paper towels, a Q-tip or two, and a cleaning agent such as alcohol or acetone. Um, you're also gonna need a lubricating oil, um, I recommend either Nano Oil or KPL, Knife Pivot Lube, which are two lubricating oils specifically for uh, pocket knives and small moving parts. Um, you could also use some blue Loctite, but I'm not going to use that today because it's not really required on this knife. So, first thing you're going to do is take your knife. Now, this one happens to be brand new, but even if you have a PLR that you've had for a while, and you want to try this on, it makes no difference. So, uh, you're going to have your pivot screw, your two body screws, and your two clip screws. Now, the pivot screw is the only one that's a T8. The rest are all T6. So the first thing you're going to do is disassemble the knife. Um, the way that I started off is I try to loosen all the screws at the same time and not remove them just to keep the knife in one piece so that I can get uh, everything apart. Now the body screws on the Pilar they have this little tube that goes through in the middle and sometimes two of the screws might not want to move so you might have to apply some pressure to hold them in place while you loosen the opposite side, and as long as you get one side off, you're good to go. Pocket clip as well. With the pocket clip, you can just take this thing right off, right off the bat, because that doesn't really serve any purpose. So we'll take that thing off. Now, as always, whenever you're uh, removing a screw, um, having gentle hands is always a benefit. It's really easy to strip out, strip out screws, especially on... Um, you know, cheaper hardware like they use in these. So, um, you know, if you're fighting a screw and it seems like it's seized or stuck, um, always go slow and slow. Um, 
you know, err on the side of caution because once you strip it out, you're pretty much um, left to uh, try to figure out a whole nother problem. So this one's coming apart nice and easy. The screw's nice and loose, body screws are loose. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take everything apart. So I'm gonna take apart, take off the body screws first. It also helps if you have a nice bench mat like this. Um, keeps all your stuff from flying across the room, getting lost in the carpet, so on and so forth. I picked up this Lyman Essentials mat on Amazon um, about a year ago. I think I paid 10 or 12 bucks for it. They might be a little bit more expensive now, but okay. So I have the pivot screw out and I have two of the body screws out. So what that's going to do is basically just make the knife blow apart. And now you can see you have your lock side, <clears throat> your show side, your blade. Blade will pop right off. Now this is a brand new knife. Do you see what's in there? Yeah, a whole bunch of crap. Brand new knife out of the factory, but again, it came out of a factory. A dirty, grimy knife factory. And uh, again, this is a brand new knife. There is a bunch of factory lube in there. And you can see there's a bunch of grit and grime. There's actually metal shavings in there. Dust, dirt, bunch of crap. Doesn't look like a brand new knife, right? This is the number one reason why your Pilar is not as smooth as you would like it to be. Um, people make a mistake in thinking that it's the washers that are the problem. Gotta get me some phosphor bronze washers. No, that's wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with nylon, Teflon, whatever you want to call them, washers. They are actually smoother from what I've researched than uh, phosphorus bronze is. The problem lies in the grit and grime and the tolerances in this knife um, that just aren't up to par with many other expensive knives. And at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. This is a $25 knife. You can't expect it to be tuned to perfection. It is what it is, but with a little bit of work, it can be an awesome knife. So, take a look. You're going to have the pivot cap on the show side. Goes right through, and look at that washer right there. There are metal shavings on it. Not the most conducive thing to smoothness. So, we're going to take that pivot cap uh, and barrel off. We're going to take the washer off and set it aside. Now we have the show scale with the stop pin. We're gonna take that off and set it aside. And we're gonna do the same thing with the lock side. <clears throat> take that washer off, put it with the other one. Now the back spacer is held on by those two little barrels. You don't even have to take this apart, but it's got those two little barrels there with the other screws. I'm just going to leave that there because there's no reason really for me to take it off. If you want to take it off and clean it up, you can do that because chances are there's metal shavings behind there as well. And uh, it's, you know, could use a good cleaning. But to keep today's video um, short and to the point, we're going to leave it on. So now that your knife is apart, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take these washers and I don't like to uh, put any alcohol or solvents on them just in case. So what I'm going to do is just take a microfiber cloth and wipe them completely clean. Get all that factory oil and debris off. Okay. <clears throat> I just don't know if alcohol or acetone is going to eat away at these. Um, Alcohol is probably fine, but acetone I wouldn't trust. Acetone pretty much eats away at almost everything. So 
Now that we got the, uh, the washers pretty clean, there we go. Okay, that's one of them anyway. Set that aside over here. We'll do the same thing to the other one. Yeah, there seems to be a, quite the debate. Well, it's not even a, really a debate online. It's just people kind of spewing what they've heard or what they assume about uh, washer material. Um, but I went and did some additional research before I really said anything. And instead of just going with the flow... Um, I had two different sources, two knife makers, actually confirm that, uh, you know, Teflon washers are actually a smoother material than phosphorus bronze. Um, the advantage of phosphorus bronze is going to be it's a harder material, so you're not going to get as much flex on it, side-to-side um, -side blade play, um, which, in my opinion, is so negligible between washers that... Um, I could care less. Um, and the other advantage is phosphorus bronze is going to technically last longer um, because it wears uh, slower. Um, again, I don't know how much you're opening and closing your knife, but if you're doing it more than, you know, 100,000 times, you might notice that advantage. For me, again, I could care less. So these are the washers that stay. Now we're going to get the alcohol. Unfortunately, it's not the fun kind of alcohol, but it's going to work on what we're doing today. So I'm just going to take a paper towel, I'm going to saturate it with some alcohol. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off both scales. Get all that factory crap out of there. Put on this one too. I'm also going to clean off the detent ball there, just so that it's ready to rock and roll for when we polish it. All right. And last but not least, we're going to do the blade. Let me get some more saturation going on here. Okay. Looks like I spilt it all over the mat. All right. So, clean this thing off really, really well. I got this knife in about uh, over a month ago. It's just been sitting in my drawer. I was going to do some mods to it, but I ran out of any and all free time for the most part. So it just sat. Now, looks like it's getting clean. All right. So we're good with that. I actually might take a Q-tip as well. Get some alcohol on that and clean out the pivot as well. All right. Now, I made a big mess <clears throat> trying to do this through the camera, much like anything else, it can be a pain in the ass. So, let's just clean up the uh, workspace here. Okay, now we have everything clean. Now we're on to phase two. With the scales, you're not going to do anything else except for the detent ball. So this one's going to stay. Show scale is going to get set aside. Now, I'm just going to wipe down the blade. Make sure it's dry. This is the part where you bust out the polish. You only need a tiny little bit as well. You're going to take a Q-tip, and you're basically just going to get a little bit on the Q-tip. Not too much, because you can always go back for more. And what you're going to do is you want to smooth out the sections of the blade flat that the washers are actually making contact with. You're going to want to do that on both sides. And all you're going to do is basically take the polish and apply it and just gently polish those areas. Now... You know, just like with uh, removing screws, going slower 
and uh, softer. It's going to take a little longer, but sometimes you just need patience. So basically, I'll just sit here and I will buff this area so that it's smooth. I'm going to use as even amount of pressure as possible so I keep it uh, uniform. Now, another thing, too, that I'm noticing is there is actually a burr on this particular knife. Can you see that right there? There's a burr on the pivot. So what I'm going to do with this knife in particular is um, I'm going to get some 2000 grit sandpaper uh, after this video and I'm going to sand that down, get rid of that burr because that could be impeding the, um, the action as well. So you got to look out for that stuff. But basically all I'm doing is polishing this washer flat up for a minute or two. Nice and gentle. And then when I'm done, I'm going to wipe and buff the excess polish with my microfiber towel. Now you want to make sure you don't go up onto the blade because you will affect the blade finish if you're not looking to do that. So just keep it right in this washer area. All right. Get all that polish off. Now you can really see that burr at the bottom of the hole there. Yeah. So basically you're just going to do that and you're going to repeat on the other side. At this point you might need a little bit more polish. Dab some more on there. And we're just going to do the same thing here. Buff, buff, buff. Wax on, wax off. Again, just for a minute or two, till it's nice and smooth and shiny. Might want to do a little bit of the detent ball path as well, just to get any grime or anything off of there. All right. So we polish that one up, and we're going to buff it with the microfiber towel again, get everything off, and now it's time for the detent ball. Same thing, you're just going to lightly buff it, smooth it out a little bit. Again, you don't want to remove any material really from the detent ball because that affects the actual uh, detent of the knife. We just want to smooth it out a little bit like it's supposed to be. Nice and smooth and shiny. Okay. <clears throat> Again with the microfiber, buff that clean, there it is, alright, now you might also be wondering why I'm using gloves, um, any type of liner lock uh, that obviously uses a steel liner or a frame lock like this one which is made out of steel, I don't want to get my greasy fingerprints on the inside because when the knife's back together and uh, it might be, who knows, months until you uh, take it apart again, those oils are going to sit on the steel and just eat away at them and cause corrosion. So I just make a habit of wearing gloves whenever I do a full takedown or work on a knife and it's probably good practice. So we're done with the polish. I'm just going to close that up. Now what I do just because I am neurotic is I take the alcohol again and I go and wipe everything down one more time. Um, I do this because if there are any remnants of the polish on the knife, I'd rather not have it be there 
while all these pieces are rubbing together over and over again. So just do a quick wipe down again of all the spots we worked on. <clears throat> and we should be good to go. Now, we gotta put this thing back together. Pivot screw, cap, barrel. You fit that into the show side. And it's got a flat spot on it so it doesn't uh, free spin. That flat spot needs to be facing the correct way, which on the pillar is towards the blade. Towards the blade edge, which is that way. And you can tell by looking at the, uh, the lock side where the flat spot is that away. Okay, so now, did you guys remember which washer went where? Because if you notice, there's two different sizes. If I can pick them up. All right, so the big washer is going to go on the show side because it's not going to interfere with the lock bar. So first thing is, lock side down, put the pivot barrel in, and put the uh, washer right on there. This is the part where I take some pivot oil. Are you guys asleep yet? Hopefully not. I put a little bit, just a little bit of pivot oil on the washer, a couple drops around it. And I only put it on the side of the washer that touches the blade. And then we take the blade. Fit that right on there. Now it's time for the other washer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of oil where that washer makes contact with the blade. Then I'm going to take that washer and pop it right down. Now let's get this thing back together. Don't forget your stop pin. Again, this is a lot harder to do on camera. Okay, stop pin is in. You're gonna take your lock side. Pop this thing back into place. This is where everything needs to line up. There it goes. Now I'm going to just take my uh, body screws and pop them in right quick. Nope, I had the wrong driver. There we go, that's your T6. Get these going. Another one. You know what I just realized? I put the uh, clip screw in here. Yeah, the clip screws are a little bit longer than the uh, body screws. But they're the same uh, head size, so. And again, I apologize if any of this is off camera because I'm trying to do this and it's hard to see what the hell I'm doing. So, got a piece of my glove off in there. All right, whatever. <clears throat> okay. Now we'll pop the pivot screw back in with our T8. Now, I'm not going to screw this in all the way. Ah, shh, Nikes. See what happened? The cap fell off. There we go. All right, stay in there. Stay with me now. 
There we go. Didn't catch the uh, threads there. Okay. So now the knife is back together, but we have to button it all up. So the way I usually do it is kind of the opposite of how I took it apart. I don't tighten everything up all the way. Um, I kind of just get everything seated. And then I work it all together. So now the knife is basically back together, but it's not tight. So you're going to get side to side blade play. You might get, uh, you know, lock rock too, because it's just not tight. So now we're going to start to tighten everything up. Um, what I usually do is I get the pivot screw almost snug. Then what I'll do is I will snug down the body screws so that they're tight. Now, don't over tighten them because then you're going to strip a screw. So just get them nice and snug. Again, with, with, uh, you got to think of pocket knives like, uh, almost like watches, you know, tiny little parts. There's a delicacy involved. Now, with these body screws, like I said, with that barrel that goes through, you're going to have to keep one side from moving, <clears throat> which you can do by either holding it with your thumb or by using a second driver <clears throat> to keep it together. Um, but basically, you just want to get them to where they're snug. And once they're there, now you can work on the pivot. Now, see how that centering's off? It's because the pivot's not tight enough. Now what I do is I always adjust my pivots at 90 degrees with the blade open. Um, I was given this tip a long time ago and it's worked out pretty well since. I think the reasoning behind it is that there isn't, um, a full amount of tension on the blade when it's in this position. You know, when it's locked, you have the lock bar on it, it can't move. And then when it's closed, you have the tension from the lock bar and the detent ball. So I don't know, I'm no wizard, but this is how I do it. And it's worked out pretty well so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this to the point of resistance where it's snug and I'm gonna check it. Now, See that centering is still way off. So I'm going to open it up, close it up, open it up, close it up. There's no side to side blade play. It's still off center. So now I'm going to try to back it off, I think, because right now it's to the left. I might need to tighten it up a little bit more, actually. Let's try that. Still off. Now oh, I see what it is. These body screws aren't all completely tightened. Or are they? All right, action is smooth. That's for sure. So it looks like I just need to work on the centering. So I'm going to play around with this uh, pivot here and um, find the sweet spot for the centering. Let's see. That's better, but it's still off. Yeah, this one's going to take some work, guys, but basically, the knife is smooth. And it's a lot smoother than it was. Um, it'll work in um, some of that oil. 
get those washers broken in. But you saw all that grease and grime and junk that was in there from the factory. And chances are, if your Pilar is gritty or stiff, that is the reason why. It has nothing to do with the material that your washers are made of. So, um, I hope this video was helpful for you. And I uh, hope it wasn't all that boring, but again, it was a tutorial, so what are you going to do? But yeah, guys, this is how you smooth the action on your CRKT Pilar. At least it's how I do it, and it's worked out well so far. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. Um, don't forget to uh, check me out on Instagram at the casual cutter. I also have a Facebook page at the casual cutter, but you know, that thing is, uh, well, it's pretty dead. Let's, let's face it. Um, but yeah, thanks for sticking around. I hope this was helpful again and I will catch you guys on the next one.